These days, I'll take any excuse to get out of the house. Lucky for me, the front range of the Rocky Mountains is just a short drive away, and the beer store is on the way back. Double IPAs are nothing new, but with the rise of the New England IPA came a much more palatable version. While the math doesn't exactly work out, I like to think of this reimagined style as a hazy with twice the alcohol and twice the hops. Hazy IPAs like this one have intense hop aroma and flavor, moderate bitterness, and a full-bodied mouthfeel. They typically weigh in at 7.5 to 10% ABV and range in color from golden to light orange or copper. This is my first go at a double like this, so I thought it'd be worthwhile to use an existing recipe. After digging around in my stack of old craft beer and brewing issues, I found Microphone Check 1-2 in the April-May 2019 edition, and it's exactly what I'm looking for. It's also available for free on their website. Now, let's make some beer. While my strike water heats up, I'm adjusting the water profile for this beer using gypsum, calcium chloride, and a little lactic acid. While this step isn't necessarily required to make good beer, it definitely helps, especially if you want to make something great. This recipe calls for about 55% Pilsner malt, 22% flaked oats, 10% white wheat malt, 5% golden naked oats, 5% carapils, and 3% rice hulls. For the mash schedule, I'm keeping it simple with a single infusion at 154, so I have this Anvil Foundry brew system set to 160 for mashing. Let's get this thing going! Keep mashing this in until everything is nice and saturated and I'll start a timer for one hour. While this mash finishes up, let's go see what's going on inside. It's been over two months since we made this Berliner Weiss and I'm super stoked to try it. We used Bavarian wheat yeast and Lactobacillus brevis from Y yeast in primary and then added some bread to the party for secondary. Time to move this thing into a keg. And I'm thinking this one would be best naturally carbonated, so the first thing I need to do is dissolve my priming sugar in a little bit of water and throw that into the keg. For this three gallon batch, Beersmith told me to use about 60 grams. Okay. Next, I need to push some CO2 into the keg. This will remove some of the oxygen that could ruin the beer. Now, I can send the beer from the carboy to the keg. The last thing I need to do is pop the top on and purge any remaining oxygen. I like to fill the headspace with 5 to 10 psi of CO2, pull the release valve, and repeat the process four or five times. I'm gonna throw this in the cellar and I'll meet you back in the garage. Time to yank these grains and get our boil started. Now that the basket is up and out of the wort, I need to sparge with about a gallon of water from my gigawort. But something's not right. 
Nothing. This is taking forever. Let's just move on and I'll figure it out later. Okay, I ended up just manually dumping my sparge water in and I think we're back on track. Let's get this boil going. All right, we're up to full boil and I think I figured out my pump issue. Turns out, if you hook the incoming hose up to the out port and the outgoing hose to the input, the pump doesn't work. What an idiot. Maybe if I mark the in and the out with a sharpie, I won't screw it up again. Wow. We're halfway through our boil and it's time for the first hop addition. Here's three and a half grams of citra, 30 minutes to go. We've got about five minutes left and I probably should have already added this wort chiller. Time for another hop addition. Here's 10 grams of citra and we've got five minutes left on our one hour timer. All right, that's the end of our one hour boil and it's time for a serious hop addition. I turned the chiller on just long enough to get the wort down to 160 degrees, and I'm adding three ounces of citra hops. And now that I know how to use a pump, I'm also gonna recirculate the wort through the hop basket and try to extract as much flavor as I can. The recipe recommends a 60 minute hop stand, but I think I'll turn the chiller back on in about a half hour. Once we're cooled down and in the fermenter, I'll pitch the yeast. I'm going with S33 and SO4 from Fermentis, and this might seem a little crazy, but I'm also including a touch of that Saison blend we made a couple episodes ago. I'm so stoked to get this thing on draft and I think it's gonna happen pretty quick. We've got two dry hop additions and probably about two weeks to go. More to come. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon.